All right, welcome to another man's point of view. I am the Space Luchador, and today we got a special fight night video. Um, I was going to say it was going to be an emergency, but not really, because it pertains to things that you may not get, right? Or at least most people do not. The reason I wanted to do fight night, well, one, is because I hadn't done it, and two... Because, for those that are not aware, uh, Francis Ngannou went out to box the greatest heavyweight boxer for today, according to the boxing fans, right, and everybody else, Tyson Fury, heavyweight champ. Um, then he went out and dropped them on his ass, right? Of course, no one knew about it, right, except for the people that are following the UFC and the whole Francis Ngannou thing and all that stuff. Right? So anyways, the point of this video is not about that fight at all. It's about a certain little thing that, just like Chael Sonnen said, a handful of people understand and know, right? The actual sport, the actual business the actual part of all of this fighting if you will right what the game is really about so why does this matter right well why does it matter why does it matter to what you're talking about space which well because it's one and the same i've been saying it all along that's why right now let's go ahead and jump in and then i'll explain what i mean but I guess I'll give you some context right before we jump in. So, Chael Sonnen here is trying to explain. His whole channel is literally trying to explain what he knows and what these handful of people know in the world today. Right? And everybody else seems to not get it. Well, same thing with me. My whole channel is literally explaining what... A handful of people understand and know today about relationships. But it's the same thing in the fighting world, right? Believe it or not. But anyways, go ahead and jump in. And let's see if I can explain what I mean. Here's the crow, Chael. Here's the crow. I wanted to feed it to you. I'm going to feed it to the camera right here. The crow, if you'd like to eat it. Here it is, Chael. Eating the crow from Saturday. Here it is. Open big, Chael. Here it comes, the plane. Ah, ah there it there is. There he is. Come on, Chell. We shocked the world. Well, Please, apologize. Ariel. Now, I put that in there because see this guy, Ariel? The biggest mark and dumbass I've ever seen, right? Because he represents literally, right, everybody that doesn't understand this because they truly believe that they know what they're talking about. Hell, the guy has a platform. He's a journalist, right? He's a fan, supposedly. And the guy doesn't know a damn thing, right? They're ass backwards. And they believe it. They truly believe it to the point that they do some dumbass stunt like this. Making Chell eat crow, right? <laughs> Amazing. Apologize. Ariel, there will be no apology. You, you must nope. understand. Let's tell the story the way that it happened. This was an incredibly big surprise. Like, this was an incredible performance by Francis. And if I was to put myself in his shoes or just other things that I've observed, while you talk about you've got thick, thick, thick skin or ice running through your face, other people can't affect it. You're a human being sure that they could get in. I mean, there was nobody that believed that Francis could do well, but that wasn't a joke. I mean, that was Tyson Fury himself. That was John Fury himself. They weren't attempting to hype or build a fight. This was one of those situations where, and I do maintain this was the biggest mismatch sporting event of my lifetime. But, Harold, that's what made this one of the great sporting events of my lifetime. And, and there it is. I've got to pause it there because it is complicated. You'll see Chael basically trying to explain this over and over again to dumbass Ariel here, and he doesn't get it. That's the way I feel. I explain it over and over and over again, right? But let me give you a quick example of what he means. Right? It was a mismatch because it was supposedly the heavyweight boxing champion 
of the world, best at his craft, against Francis Singano, yes, who was the UFC champion. However, he wasn't the champion of boxing. Different sport, right? Now, everybody that knows boxing will go and put their hands on the fire over boxing, over any other sport, right? They say, well, boxing, right? He's going to get murdered out there, right? If he goes out and box. Right? Well, right? That's what made it interesting. Just the fact that you, we wanted to see Singano. Well, I didn't, but I guess some people wanted to see Singano fight Tyson Fury, right? To see what would happen. That's what made the event the event. That's what makes it a one-off thing. That's what makes it quote unquote successful because it it wasn't successful right now Chell goes on to explain that but I'll give you the quick summary right it was a pay-per-view at 2 p.m. in the daytime right? there's no way it could be successful why because I myself found out about it after the fact right when I got home at night after doing what I do right it turns out this fight had already happened. I was like, oh shit, well, I didn't know about it, right? Chael didn't know about it. So how the hell could this be a successful pay-per-view if it was a 2 p.m. in the middle of the day type of thing? So there you go, explain that. Then Ariel, his big thing is that Singano got paid, right, 10 to $20 million, right? Which beats whatever he won in the UFC. Which is not a damn point, but that's his big ass point, right? And that's the whole damn argument, and that he made the best decision as a fighter in this and that, and Dana's the bad guy in the UFC. Well, if this is so successful, why in the hell did they continue to go back to talk trash about Dana, right? Because, and that's the point, right? That it's irrelevant. The fight. It's irrelevant if Dana is not involved. And now to tie that into relationship world, it's the same thing. There's things that are irrelevant, right? That don't matter. Everything that Ariel thinks that is valuable and important, right, in the fight game actually is irrelevant. He doesn't understand the biggest and at the core problem. That we actually have. That's where me and Chill step in and play. We've been trying. All right, but anyways, let's go ahead and continue. And I hear people talk about it and, and come out the backside. There, there is always a confusion. There, there, there's a confusion sometimes where somebody's talking about the competition itself or they're talking about the spectacle and the night of business. And, and that is a split decision. I've never personally lived through a sporting event. I've heard of that. I heard the Miracle on Ice was like this, but I didn't live through it. Where... The buzz and the excitement, the celebration, appreciation, the headlines are more bountiful about the event after the event. And I bring that to you because, and your viewers know this to be true, though they will deny it today, they were not on Friday night having a hard time sleeping with excitement. They did not wake up early high on life because they were thrilled for a sporting event. They were not invited between three different parties where people were having them over. They were not at the water cooler the night before and trading around tickets. This, from a business standpoint and the pay-per-view numbers, it bombed. But it did what people thought that it would do. It bombed. <laughs> and that's the point, right? It bombed. Now, yes, the event itself was good. And yes, Francis went out there and shocked the world. And yes, he won the fight, but he didn't really. Not on paper. Right? He actually lost the fight, but that's because he left it to the judges, right? And two, the event bombed. No matter how great it was, it bombed. Same thing with relationships, right? That's what I've been trying to say, right? If you go out there, yes, I won the date, and yes, I did, did. you bombed, right? And let's just say you somehow got it in. Right? Your date bombed. Why? Because you didn't see the big picture. And that's the point. Right? Now let me see if I can explain it somehow. Right? When you do an event, right? Just as you go on a date with a woman, 
you got to know what you're doing so that you can be successful on your future dates. Does that make sense? You have to be the guy. That's the way you have to think about it. Right now, let me explain the fighting again, because this is fight night. Right? This event was good. Yes, okay. But it bombed. Means there is no rematch. And there's no rematch by so many different level and reasons, right? Because one, whether he had won, he would have won anyways, the belt was not on the line. Now understand, I've always been saying this. Chael's been saying it. Well, I don't know if Chael's been saying it like I've been saying it, but I've been saying it. It's about the belt. It's about what the hell you're fighting for. You can do a one-off thing like this one, where I want to see this, but there is no future in it. And that's where everybody doesn't seem to get it. Right, not to mention 10 to $20 million. Right? Who in the hell is going to pay that after this thing bombed? Do you not get it? Right? Apparently, Ariel says yes. They're going to pay his ass a lot of money. And they're going to do it in Dubai. Right? Because they just have money to throw around, apparently. But again, if it's irrelevant... Now you've turned the quote-unquote sport or fighting event into an irrelevant thing. That's the point. Right? You either do one thing or you do something that no one cares, knows, or heard about. Now, yes, she can make you millions, but what are we doing at this point? Understand? Right? <laughs> Did I explain it right? Do! It wasn't expected to be a great event. It turned out to be wildly competitive and it was incredible. That's the accurate story. And if you want to heap praise on Francis and Wonderball contribute, of course I do. I was blown away. I was blown away by it. Uh, can you say now, though, in retrospect, and I know hindsight is 2020, here we go. The decision to leave the UFC, the decision to sign with PFL, who allowed him to fight in boxing, to go after the Tyson Fury fight, to have this fight where he had it on the night that he had it, all these things over the past year that so many people, including yourself, criticized him heavily for. I criticized too. And I tell you, I'm telling you why. And I'm defending it as a matter of fact, proving that I'm right. Just as Chael was right then, it was a bad move. Now, yes, he got a big ass payday because he found a damn mark, but that's it. You don't see the problem. You don't see the mathematical, you're done. Right? It's one of those things where I'll eat today, but fuck the rest of the days, right? It's like you under you gotta understand the situation you are in. Right? Let's say yes, you're hungry as hell. You want all this food and you get one chance. One chance to either get all this food, right? On this one day, right? Or you can get all this food basically throughout the rest of your lifetime. You see the difference? You get all this food, one big ass meal on this one day because you're so damn desperate and want everything now, right? And yes, you can, all you can eat, all you will ever need on this day. But what about the rest of your days? You ain't going to get jacked. You do not, you not see it. You see the difference. No? Anyways, that's what he's explaining. Can you now admit that he was right and everyone else was wrong? No, no. no but if he said no. he was, <laughs> I would. If he came in and said, hey, Ariel, in this amount of time that I've set out, which was almost two years, I mean, it was three months shy of two years, so a year and nine months, in that amount of time, Statistically speaking, I would have had four fights within the UFC. Shave one off, I would, you know, I would have had five fights. Let's call it four with my new participation since I was champion. If I was to look at the number in terms of dollars, that would have been larger than what I got against Fury. It's one of those things. But if he came out and said, I don't care about the money. It's about competition. It was about proving something and living a dream. Then I would fully listen to him. He did I say that. I would always respect somebody. He did say you see the difference, what he just explained right there. And that's what I'm trying to explain. Right? It's do you want it for what is really worth it? What's the reason we're actually doing this? What's the true satisfaction? Right? If you're doing it for the money, you ain't you don't care about the sport, do you? You don't want to be the best, do you? You don't really want to perform, do you? 
You want the money, and you'll go wherever the hell that is. But clearly, if all you care about is money, then what the hell do I care about your career? Now, same thing in re- woman relationship, right? <laughs> like the same thing. It's like if all you care about is the money, so that you can get the women, then do you not see where you're fucking up? It's not about the money. Never has, never will be. You just don't get it. It's an illusion that everybody seems to think that that's what it's all about. It's not, right? What really counts is when you can do it for no money, right? And become great at it. But anyways, it's a whole nother thing. So let's continue. Say that it was about. I haven't heard that. If he came out and said that that it was about competition, which so it's very rare about times it is in our sport, sadly. Sadly, I would, I would love that. I will always put a competitor first. But but I, I am only pushing back on you for one reason, Errol, and it's not to, to put a mirror in front of myself or my resistance to do so. The way that you're speaking is putting out a tone that if other fighters here, I can do this to get to that. Look, this was a real rare thing. First off, it was not a great night of business. And sec- Now, that alone is one of the biggest problems of them, of them all, right? Is that other fighters hear this and they're, well, first of all, it's a letdown because it's like you're, you are a fighter. You're in the business. You should know what business you are in. And for some reason... They don't seem to get it. That's a letdown right there all by itself. Then these same fighters will go out there and say, now I want to do what Francis did. Well, now you just became a dumbass mark. You are no longer my hero. Do you not see this? Right? You are no longer my hero. I am not going to follow you because I know you're going down the path of following this guy who made all the dumb, dumbass decisions. Do you not see how that works now let me give you a small ass little example of that in relationship bro tate andrew tate and then everybody else i won't be like andrew tate and there you go now you're following the dumbass right and you get the same little loop that your same little loop that you're getting in ufc for example right joe rogan himself don't know what the hell he's talking about and he is in the sport He's the biggest commentator of the sport. How the hell can that be? Right? (laughs) However, that's the crazy world we live in. Right? This is the same guy that said that Ronda Rousey could beat Mayweather. (laughs) Right? It's amazing. This is the same guy that is hyped up about a fight. Right? And then goes on his podcast to say, how they just did it to sell the fight. And then he goes and cuts a check that they paid him to hype up. It's amazing. But anyways, that's a whole nother thing. Second off, you had an entity, not a promoter, not a district, nothing unique with our sport. You had an entity who going into it was willing to lose. So it's it's a unique spot where did did everything get played out and he, he pulled something off? I would not say anything negative about Francis or what he did. I'm part of the celebration party, but you... All right, now, yes, let me clarify that. Yes, he got what he wanted. He got the money. However, the message that is being sent out there is the problem, right? He pulled it off. He pulled off a big payday. That's what he did. That's all that he did. Do you not see that? He pulled a big payday. That's it. Now... Let me explain what Shale's gonna try to explain, right? Because Ariel don't seem to fucking get it, right? But it's forward. Your message that this was a financial win, they're gonna do it again. Just look, come on, man, oh, you're, you're that, not right. Uh, no, well, uh, financial win for who? For Francis, Here yes. We go. Let's say he made it in the 10 to 20 million range, right? As has been reported. His last fight was 600 No, no, no. Well, hold, let's hold say, on. Hold let, on. Let's he, say, hold on. Time out. No, ahead. you just lied. You well, just lied. I you just not. lied. I did There's not. nobody. You lot. Stop. Stop. There's nobody that is. You just pulled me up on screen, which I was in there. Pull that up. There's nobody, including a terrible dirt sheet, that has said 10 to 20 million. Yeah. Not to mention, how awful would they be? I mean, that's a vast prediction. That's 10 to 20 million is a 100% gap. 
One million to one five is what a professional would do. And Errol, in all fairs, he got ten million dollars. He's always said ten million dollars. No one's predicted twenty million. Ten pay per view bomb. Don't come out of first, first of all, ten million is a first, beautiful number. First of Tell all, the truth. First of all, uh, how do you know the pay per view bomb? A. Here we go. Who's reporting that? How do you know? Ariel, what do you what do you mean? How do I know? <laughs> and exactly. <laughs> what do you mean? How, how, what do you mean? How do I know about the ten to twenty million? I'll play that same game too. You think I'm pulling shit out of my head? No, 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 no. See, and this is what I'm talking about. I run into these type of guys all the time, right? And what I talk about, I'm only trying to explain to you, right, how it's all connected. Here we got Ariel going, oh. like he knows exactly what he's talking about, but he's a complete dumbass. He doesn't know, right? How do you know it, Bob? I could play the same game as you. He, he doesn't get it. But only literally five or a handful of people on the face of the planet know what the sport and the business is really all about and how it truly works, right? Everybody else seems to just not get it. They call it, um, well, here's a version of it, but they call it uh, uh, MMA math, right? <laughs> that can be used, yes, to calculate how a fight is going to go down. That's MMA math. However, there's another level above that, right, on how the actual business and sport actually works. That's, that's next level, right? You don't seem to understand, but there, believe it or not, there's a math to it and a science to it, right? That's why you can't just go out there and promote whatever you want. Some things can be one-offs, some things make sense, really make sense, right? Even though it's backwards. But again, that's why it's all damn hard. It's all damn complicated. No, no, no it's, it's not a matter of that. It is it's a matter, not a matter of that. Of that. Yes, Aaron. it is. You said, no, you said, no, it's not. Your words are what I'm challenging. You're the one that lied. And I said to you, and I, you're, I'm quoting you. You said it's been reported. Yeah, you on the show. You could bring up dog crap. You could bring up dog crap off the internet. I'll accept it. Pull it up. It's not been reported. On this you show. made that up or you misspoke. On this you show. You said those 10 words. to 20 million on this show. Now I'm asking you. Oh, now, now, what? Am I not a source? Can I not you be a source? You said it's been reported. The, on this you show. Look at the frustration. <laughs> on who? Me. The greatest of all time. Oh, what are you talking about? I got 10 13. to 20 million? Yes. You're like one of those weirdos that tell us dinosaurs lived between 10 million and 100 million <laughs> years ago. You can't give yourself a gap of 100%. Well, it let depends me on the, the pay-per-view. It me depends play on the pay-per-view. Let me play the same game and let me call myself breaking news. Let me play the same game. For Francis made between no money and infinite money, fighting fury. <laughs> what are you Perfect talking example. about? Oh, Chael, you I'm, should be I'm, reporter of the year. Mar well, I, wow. I, have, I have 13 trophies that say I'm the best reporter in this game. And so let me ask you, the reason why... 13 trophies mean not a damn thing. You see, that's what I'm saying. Here's a guy that's never stepped foot <laughs> in the damn sport, but he's somehow an expert because right, he's got a couple of trophies. See, this is the difference, and, that, and that's the point, right? This, this is this is exactly. First of all, it's entertaining, right? But, but the point, this is it. Are right, you got someone that knows exactly what he's talking about? It's Uncle Chael, frustrated, frustrated because he explains it all sorts of levels. And then you got the dumbass that just doesn't get it. It doesn't go through. Because to him, he's convinced that he's 100% right. But he's a dumbass because he doesn't even know. He's not even aware of where the problem actually lies. Right? Because he's stuck in his dumbass belief that's literally irrelevant. That's what's crazy about it. But I can, this same scenario has happened when I talk to guys about how it really works, right? In a relationship like this, blah, blah, blah. And they're stuck in this dumbass belief and they refuse to see what the actual problem is, right? The manosphere, all this, they all seem to be stuck in this same little tiny ass dumbass, believe it or not, core problem, right? If you just switched it, right? 
But anyway, there it is. Why it's 10 to 20. Between 10 and 20 million? Because of the pay-per-view cut. The pay-per-view cut. And that's why I'm asking you about the pay-per-view numbers that you say they bombed. If they did bomb, then it's 11. If they didn't bomb, maybe it's 15. So then tell me, I gave you my source. Me. Now you tell me your source. No, I called you out and you got caught lying. I didn't get caught. Who's your source on the pay-per-view? Now let me explain the pay-per-view. This is how stupid Ariel sounds, right? He made $20 million on the fight. And then a whole nother, tw- another, no, hold up, $10 million. See, he's like, fucking me up. $10 million on the fight. And then another 10 mil, a whole nother 100% payday on pay per view. Now, let's say, for argument's sakes, right, that Ariel is right somehow. First of all, you gotta understand, you gotta get $10 million alone. To pay Francis, right? Now, who's paying that? Hmm? Explain that to me. Who's playing that? And then, supposedly, pay-per-view is going to give him a whole nother $10 million. Right? Now, we know that the pay-per-view is paying that. But if the pay-per-view bombed, how can you pay the 10 Well, anyways, just, you get the point. The math. Now, let's just say they do for whatever. You know? Somebody paid $10 million. And then pay-per-view plays 10 million. But you know how much it costs to run a damn event of that magnitude between lights, referees, and tickets, and security, and licensing, and promotion, and all this crap. Do you not see? 10 million just doesn't. Oh, here you go. Thank you, Francis. Here's your 10. What about the other fighters? Hmm? What about the lights? What about the building? What about the deals and the cuts that everybody's chopping at you to do a damn event? You not see how it's not fe- feasible. It's not. Not to mention, again, I, I wasn't aware of the fight. Jail didn't find out till it happened. So, it would have been a complete success. And yes, I would have been on the op. I paid for the pick. I didn't. I didn't know. Hell, I all I saw, and I still haven't seen the fight. I saw the highlights. That's it. And I don't really want to go back to see the fight. That's the point. Right? So if I don't want to see the, the this fight, I'm good with the highlights. What makes you think I want to see a future Francis Ngano boxing fight? Right? But that's a whole nother, again, that's a whole nother, that's not... I guess we're talking. Well, you know what? Yes, that's part of the problem. I only want to see Francis fight against maybe two other people, and I don't want to see him box. You you did not see that, right? Now I'm not saying everybody thinks like me, but for the (laughs) for the few that want to see Francis box, um, there's probably fewer people that want to actually pay for it. (laughs) See the difference? Right? I would pay to see Francis versus John Jones. Right? For the belt, even that. Right? Or Francis versus I don't know, who's another good but it has to be in the UFC, like his return fight or something like that. But that's it. I will not pay to see him box. Because and I'll explain this simple because uh, Chael doesn't go on to explain that, but I will, right? You were putting a fighter who fights in the U.S. ultimate fighting and then limiting him to boxing. Do you not see? You just lowered the standard. This guy could fight ultimately. And you just put him down in boxing. It, that's that's not ambition. That's not going up. That that's going down. That's di- downgrading. And you want to pay more and make more, right? To downgrade. It's it comes down to that. It really is, right? You you saw the fight. Well, whoever saw the boxing fight, it, it went down to decision. It's not a good fight. Right? No true winner. Not to mention, you ain't getting no rematch. And the fight. Other than the knockdown, it's pretty, you know, it is what it is. I'm going to say boring. Because we've seen him 
in true battles in the UFC, and that's the point. Right? But anyways, uh, I don't know how else to explain other than that, right? And it's like, I mean, there's one more way. Who's your source on the paper? For yeah, let's forward a little bit. The biggest lie that I lived through, right? I, I I hear the term fake news in 2016. I didn't believe that that was true. I thought that was just something you say. I lived through Mayweather McGregor, oh, where no. I stood on the floor of the arena and was instructed to tell the world it was sold out. And I could look and there was thousands. Yes, I of saw that too. I, but I bring you heard that? Thousands of empty. Why do you think Connor, Connor, that fight never happened again? Matter of fact, some can argue. That uh, Mayweather's career after that was down the shitter. Now, of course, I'm like, well, he's living the life. Yes, he is. Because he, again, got a big ass payday. He found some dumbass mark, just like Connor did. And now he's rich beyond belief, right? But that's it. Why did Connor come back to fight the UFC? Right? Because he actually likes the sport. But ever since then, that, that, you know, that's it, right? You're done. You chose the payday over the passion, the glory, and what it really is about. Right? That's the point. And we'll end with that, I guess, because there's no reason in seeing it, the argument back and forth of a dumbass against a master at the sport. And he goes on to try to explain over. And Dover and Ariel, right? Ariel, the big, right? Who knows how many trophies? And he's the, he's a dumbass. Just doesn't know what he's talking about. And everybody who watches him truly believes that he knows what he's talking about. And that's and that's that's depressing. But anyways, there you go. When with that for this one because it's depressing <laughs> so anyways i'll see you on the next man's point of view